Okay, a few more uh, related rates problems. This is another classic, ships in the ocean. Uh, ship A is 32 miles north of ship B. Now let's go ahead and draw that. Okay, so ship A, okay, is 32 miles north of ship B, okay? And is sailing due south at 16 miles per hour, okay? Um, there are several ways that you can set this up. Well, let's go ahead and deal with ship B first, okay? Ship B is sailing due east at 12 miles an hour, okay? At what rate is the distance between them changing at the end of one hour? Well, instead of actually drawing it, um, let's deal shoot, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, let's deal with this right here as, um, this is of course is 32. So if we want to deal with however far ship A has traveled as X, then we can deal with the remaining distance here as 32 minus X. Uh, or we can deal with this as, as X, right? Uh, let's go ahead and call this X. And let's go ahead and call this y, okay? Now, if it's 32 miles north of ship B and is sailing due south, okay, then we know, okay, that, that isn't part of the, really the given information. It's kind of where it starts out, and that can help us out. Uh, but, okay, so ship B is sailing due east at 12 miles an hour, okay? At what rate is the distance between them changing at the end of one hour? Okay, so the given information is the fact that dx dt is changing at negative 16 mph. dy dt is changing at positive 12 mph. The question is, what is dz dt? Okay, and of course the condition is after one hour. Well, after one hour, x is going to be 32 minus 16, so x is going to be 16, and of course y is going to be 12. 3, 4, and of course z is going to be 20. There's that 3, 4, 5 right triangle again. Okay, and so we know that it's going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. And when we differentiate, we're going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and do it without the coefficient of 2, since we'll just go ahead and differentiate and divide by 2 in one fell swoop, because you know they're all going to have a coefficient of 2, so you could ultimately just divide through by it. And now I have a equation of six unknowns. I have one, two, three, four, five of them, and I simply need to find dz, okay? So I know that x, of course, is 16. dx dt is negative 16, okay? dy or y is 12 dy dt is positive 12, and z is 20, dz dt. It's obviously going to be negative because this negative 16 right here, next negative 16 squared is going to be larger. So we have negative 256 plus 144 over 20 is equal to dz dt and that's going to wind up being negative, negative 112 over 20, and then of course you can turn into a decimal approximation. Uh, dz dt is going to be negative 112 over 20. So that's 28 fifths, right? Negative 28 fifths. Uh, and of course that is going to be mph, miles per hour. Okay, so all we've done is the 32, I mean, you could have set it up such that the 32 was given information, uh, but since it, since that basically was giving you, it was, the starting point really was one hour from them, okay? That's the condition. 
And so as long as you set this up correctly, right, and knowing that x is getting smaller, knowing that y is getting larger, uh, you don't actually have to use the 32 except insofar as it helps us to get this conditional information. It's sort of a lead-in to find that conditional information, okay? Because originally, A was here and it was moving south, and B was here and moving east, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This is another classic. A young child is flying a kite horizontally 120 feet above the ground. Okay, and we know that I'm not an artist. Okay, uh, uh, kite. Woo, okay, and uh, okay, and so that right there is 120 feet. Okay. The child lets out 2.5 feet of string per second, okay? Well, of course, we're assuming a whole lot here. We're assuming that, you know, it's right on the ground where he's holding it. Uh, let's say that he's, you know, laying on the ground while he's flying the kite, I suppose, okay? Uh, remember, it's ideal circumstances when we're dealing with a math problem. And you have x and 120 is your y, it's not going to change, and your z. So your given information is the fact that dz dt is a positive 5 halves feet per second. Okay, z is getting larger. He's letting string out, okay, or she, or I don't know. Does it even say whether it's a he or she? I don't know. She, okay, let's call her Darla, I don't know. Okay, so Darla is letting out string at 5 halves feet per second. Okay, if we assume that there is no snag in the string, at what speed is the kite moving? Meaning, if it remains 120 feet off the ground, but you're letting out kite string, the, the kite's going to continue to move this way, right? Because Z is going to get longer. And this, and this thing is going to sort of collapse as the kite runs this way. If the kite is moving laterally this way, you're basically measuring it according to it moving laterally vis-a-vis -vis the ground. Okay, So you want to know dx dt when, and here's your condition, your condition is z is equal to 130 feet. Well, of course, the implied conditional is the fact that x is equal to 50 feet because though that is a factor that is a multiple of a 5 12 13 right triangle and so if I have x squared okay plus 120 squared uh, is equal to z squared so I have my picture my given my question my conditional and now my equation I know that x dx dt is equal to z dz dt, again, there should be a 2 in front of here and a 2 in front of here, but I went ahead and just canceled that in my mind. And so we know that dx dt is going to be z, which is 130 feet, times dz dt, 5 halves feet per second, over 50 feet. Those units cancel with those units, okay? The 10 right here cancels with the 10 right here. And you're going to wind up getting 13 times 5, which is 65, over 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, or you could cancel out the 5s, obviously. And you're going to wind up with 13 halves feet per second. Okay, dx dt is changing at 13 halves feet per second. And remember, it's, it's the same cadence every single time we do this. Picture, given, question, condition, and then move on from there, okay? <clears throat> uh, I, this, is, this is, you know, video number eight, okay? And there are a couple other varieties of it. Uh, there's, you know, blowing up a balloon and stuff like that. Uh, if, if you, I think you really need to go back and watch the other videos as well. Uh, but these, this is sort of a supplement uh, for new problems for you uh, to re help you review for the final. I hope it's helpful. Um, good luck on the final, and uh, hope to see you uh, next semester. Bye.